Hi guys, so as you know, uh, we had a street construction here and because of that I had to remove some panels here of my garage array. I have later on uh, rebuilt this array and made it longer. But now I actually, after the street is completed and the walkways are done, I have got back my space here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add one row of panels. For that purpose I made myself these beams from one by two inch steel. On one side I've put these ears there with two holes and this is going now here into the mount. So on the main beam here I had to do some cutouts for the steel and on this side it's then just screwed into the other beam. Now here the new panels can lay on these two uh, steel beams. The new panels I already got them also. The new panels which will go there are the oversized type 550 watt uh, peak panels from Suntec. Five of these panels, it's almost again 3 kilowatt peak and the length of this new string is 11 meters exactly what I have space there. I'm going to put the remaining steel elements into the cardboard here and then I need to weld all these pieces together and later on I can put the panels on top. It's next day in the morning we have again a massive rebuilt finished PV array at the garage. I've installed the panels yesterday. What's missing now is just to connect them these are the half cell type PV panels, so I have to connect them now together from one panel to the other using a PV cable and MC4 connectors. Five panels in a row in series. And once this is done, the wiring here from my junction box is already done because originally there was a 1000 500 watt a string connected so the only thing missing is an uh, DC SPD that I have to install it goes to the utility disconnect inside there so the DC is already arriving here where the small inverter was installed uh, at this place I will now use my existing 3000 watt inverter from there and because in this area then all the new equipment will be installed for the uh, local storage here at the garage. So yeah I'm going to connect all this now and then uh, I just have to wait for the new equipment to arrive and then we're going to continue the garage build. Oh, look what just arrived. Two big boxes. Oh my god, one's inside here. Christmas already coming early this year. Uh, yeah, I would say, let's take a look, open it up. The first device is a day hybrid inverter. This is a 6 kilowatt version, so the biggest of this uh, particular series. Then they have, of course, bigger ones. But this now is a full hybrid, and I have a lot of plans with this one here in the garage. 
So let's take this away and look what's in the other one. So this one is a 10 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery pack. A finished pack, finished battery, brand new. I have ordered both of these directly from China, from a Chinese supplier from Alibaba. And yeah, how exactly this went and how much I've paid for these two devices. I'm gonna tell you and this will be our job for the next maybe one or two days to install this uh, system here at my garage. So this here is the place, the wall where everything will be installed. It, it's a place where originally one 3000 watt inverter was installed there. So inverter comes again here, then the battery just underneath and all of this will actually have to go. This is from the solar system and the sub panel from the garage. This one here is the sub distribution from the MDB, so phase number three, which goes to several buildings. One is here the garage. then the laundry building and one of the apartments. So this will stay. It will just be reorganized. There's something what will come more inside here. And that will be the EV charger. We'll move from the sub panel to the dis distribution directly there. And then I need breakers, which will then go directly to the inverter and the bypass for the transfer switch. And yeah, this here will all go. Instead of the sub panel of the garage, there will be a bigger one, which will then include the essential load panel. So essentially the load output of the inverter and the input side, the grid side. So two rows panel uh, will come here. Yeah, so I'm going to work now on the uh, distribution here, the TNC branch of the MDB. And yeah, I have to take the power off of all of these uh, buildings now and then just uh, reorganize and make it safer. What I mean with make it safe, I will show you in a second. So this is now what I mean with increased safety. This is just a TNC distribution. So there's only hot and neutral inside this box, nothing else. And that's why I used actually this one bar there. Thermal bar is a hot one and the other one is the neutral. But this will be now changed. I will remove uh, this uh, hot bar here and make it as a terminal which is uh, connected to the DIN rail here. So that will, of course, improve safety. Not for me, because I know the situation, but if uh, at some time another electrician have to open up this, then he should not be in danger to touch a hot wire, of course. So this uh, panel I will now completely make over with uh, some separate extra breakers and then we're going to work on this side here.
Okay, right, I have now finished the distribution. So we have now several few breakers here. So number one is still the apartment, and then the laundry, then the EV charger moved into this box, and then we will have the inverter AC in and the transfer switch grid in. So this is all on this side. Everything is now connected initially to a terminal there, so there is no more uh, hot terminal bus anywhere here in this box. Okay, on this side I'm going to install now the double row sub panel and yeah, then we are going to see how this looks like. This is now box number two. In principle this is actually a main panel main panel from this building here and it will also incorporate all the hybrid inverter stuff and what do we see here so upper row here this is the grid side we have a grid direct grid in here into a transfer switch and here still missing that will be then the inverter so the primary source will be the hybrid inverter for the AC secondary source will be the uh, grid. We have a SPD, AC SPD. This is still just a type 2, uh, 275 volt clamping voltage. I will uh, replace this with a combination type 1, type 2. So to be better protected against lightning here also. And this is the terminal for the hot. So at the moment we are supplied already here by the grid via the source beyond the transfer switch. In this box, this is now the first time that you also see green wires. This is the ground. And on the side, this is a neutral terminal, but this is still the neutral, like it is coming now from our power source, which is the grid only by two wires. So it's a neutral a PEN, a protective earth neutral combined conductor here from our TNC system. So on the second row, this is now the load side of the uh, typically hybrid inverter because that will be the uh, main power source here. But at the moment, this is supplied, of course, from the grid also. This is called the essential load panel here. Uh, we have an RCD and then the original uh, circuit basically from the garage which is light outlets and the water pump. So this I want to have supplied in the case of a, a grid outage. This is now the job of the hybrid inverter to have power all the time. The fourth one is just a spare. So when you look now up here, we are talking always about grounding grounding systems on my channel. At the moment we have ground behind this bar on the other side of the wall there is a grounding rod and neutrals which are separated. So we do not have any neutral to ground bond until this point at the moment. This setup as it is now is representing a TT earthing system Fault currents can only return to the power source, which is now the transformer, via the grounding rod here at the building. And then at the grounding rod at the transformer, it will return back to the neutral side. And the only protective measure which can now actually uh, disconnect our circuits in case of a fault is this RCD. So we can test this. I have this uh, voltage continuity meter. How to test a circuit? So we can just look now at the moment. We have power here, 230 volts. You can see that. And if I want to test now, if this situation, the TT earthing system is good enough to disconnect a circuit, I can now put one probe on my earthing bar 
one probe goes to the face behind the RCD of course. I can now press these two buttons and the RCD tripped. So even still in this configuration our earthing protection works but it can only uh, work with the RCD here. So later on of course when the hybrid inverter is installed that hybrid inverter has a special feature it has an internal bonding relay if i am really dependent that this tt system needs to be continued from the grid side then i can program the hybrid inverter and use the the internal bonding relay to actually then provide a neutral to ground bond in the case that the hybrid inverter is in the battery mode or off-grid mode, right? So then the hybrid inverter itself will provide us with a TNS system, which is a very good uh, system then. But as I said, I'm actually here not limited. This is not a TT system by necessity. It's just to demonstrate you that DT systems can work as well, of course, but they need an RCD in the circuit. I will then later on when all the setup is done put a neutral to ground bond because we are in a TNC system we can then turn the TNC system into the TNCS so I can put a permanent bond don't need to use uh, the internal bonding relay of the inverter and can just provide the uh, neutral to ground bond which will then be set it must be set of course from ground to neutral before the rcd so it will be set between those two bus bars i cannot use the other one here on the down because that is already after the uh, the neutral after the rcd and that would trip the rcd okay yeah so next thing to do is installation of the inverter and the battery then make the final cable connections and the hybrid system and after we can start programming the inverter and look how I want to use this here and what kind of settings we need for that. <clears throat> Battery and inverter are now mounted on the wall. Right, so the cabling is completed. I have connected grid, I have connected load, I have connected the CT and the network cable. Load is going here now into my automatic transfer switch and the uh, grid comes from here. Let's talk about the CT a little bit. You see the CT is mounted here. You always need a CT when you don't want to export something to the grid of course. But I have actually a different plan with this inverter. I don't want to export power, of course, when it comes from the battery, which would be over the night time. But when the battery is full during the daytime, I, of course, want to export to my system. But there's one problem. Here on this, I do have a, another grid tight system connected. So if I would set the CT, main supply cable which are the big ones right this would actually be compromised so the grid time inverters would produce an excess energy here and this hybrid inverter would then always think that there is actually no power needed and it would not put the excess solar from itself on the grid that's why I have put the CT as you might see on two individual wires and that's actually loads that's the apartment and the laundry so as long those two buildings are taking some load for the hybrid inverter this will be then a sign that it can supply power there and also during the night time when there is demand on those two buildings it will then supply power to those two buildings and 
discharge the battery. I've now started the washing machine in the laundry and you see it's uh, what the inverter now does with all the battery is it takes the available solar energy and puts it onto the load. So almost all of it goes to the load and the CT which is here shown as the grid is now actually zero. So it has completely cancelled out the demand and nothing comes from the grid there. But of course, as you see now, as soon you have less demand there, then the solar energy has to uh, be reduced, of course. So this is without the battery. When you have a battery, the excess solar would of course go into the battery if the battery has some capacity available. But now without the battery, the solar has to follow the loads, of course, and the grid stays at zero if this is possible at that moment. So yeah, this is the hybrid inverter just as a grid tight inverter without a battery. So what do we need in terms of setting to make it work like that? So we're going to the system work mode and then we have to choose zero export to CT and you have to check solar cell because without that the output or input cable of the grid is not used and it would only use the solar power to power the load which would in our case be the essential load panel or the garage here. I have set this now to about 2400 watts to go to the grid side uh, which is actually kind of the maximum PV input which we can get here now. I only have about 3000 watt peak connected to this system and this would actually be well enough to fill up the battery which will be somewhere around 5 kilowatt hours every day and then uh, export the rest of the available excess power. In the next video we are going to connect the battery and then we have to think about how to ground this of course because now as a grid tie inverter the inverter itself is only grounded by the normal grounding system in this case now we still have the TT system here in the box no connection between neutral and ground but this has to change once the uh, inverter is running on battery mode technically becomes a full of grid system so thank you for watching this video it was a little bit longer but i hope you could kind of get the big picture here this inverter can do so many things and we will then go through every mode once it is fully installed please like comment and subscribe and i see you next time